All right, hey, hi, and net everybody. This is Pika here, and I'm here to present to you Katawa Shoujo Part tw Thirteen. Yeah, thirteen. That's right. Anyway, oh god. So basically, um, yesterday I. Unfortunately, um, yesterday, Mikako City Actors premiered yesterday, and the thing is, though, I didn't want to watch it without the correct team, who's been subbing the, um, commercials all this time, and the ones I've been tweeting about on the fucking Twitter. I didn't, I didn't, I wanted to see their version of the, uh, translated Mikako City Actors first episode, so that, so basically I was waiting in anticipation all day yesterday for, for the episode, and, uh, yeah, so that's why there wasn't a stream yesterday. Sorry about that. Anyway, but, um, I will say this, I'm so fucking happy, because basically, when I was sleeping, they released the first episode, and I watched it, and I'm like, oh my god, this is so fucking amazing! Seriously, I think after an hour or so of jumping up and down, like, yes, yes, yes! I was, I finally, I finally calmed down, and now I can record. Anyway, let's get started. Don't freeze on me, please. Alright. Alright. I wake up all sweaty, as if I had run a half marathon in my sleep. Hot. I don't recall see sleeping badly. It sends a little pang of worry through me. I wouldn't want to have my heart acting up without being able to notice it. Still, apart from this odd exhaustion right after waking up, I'm feeling just fine. My mouth is like sandpaper and I have nothing to drink, so I have to go all the way to the bathroom to take my meds. On impulse, I decide to take a shower while I'm at it. While I'm in the shower, I make up my mind that this counts as morning exercise if I properly compensate with a nice half-hour walk around after school. Obviously, I wouldn't want to risk possible complications by going running now. Besides, Emmy will never know, and I think she's given up on me in any case. Walking could be nice anyway, just to get to know the area. But still, Mikaku City Actors- I love the first episode. I cannot wait until- I cannot wait until Saturday again. There's a big forest in the hills behind the school, or I could go down to the convenience store. Or I could do what I do every morning when I'm at school, take three walks around the damn campus. That'll help. While well, still dabbing the moisture off my skin, I set out to find my uniform. I quickly button up my shirt and pull on my pants before going outside. Normally during this time of the year, I'd be eagerly awaiting summer vacation. Having only been at school for a little over a week, I don't really have that kind of feeling. I'm still savoring the school life and considering the sharp and awkward turn my life has taken. I haven't had the time to become preoccupied with getting free of it. Besides, once vacations hit, it'll be a nice surprise for me if I'm not expecting it, especially with the end of the term exams looming ahead. At least I don't have any catching up to do with my studies. My diligence has finally paid off. I push myself past the boys gathered in a doorway and flop into my seat. From the corner of my eye, she sees Shizune and Misha pause their unavoidably animated conversation and turn almost simultaneously in my direction. They clearly want something from me. I can tell from the way Shizune smiles. It's too ab 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 Oh my god, have I forgotten how to pronounce this word? It's too obnoxiously bright to be sincere and too calculated to be spontaneous. Good morning! Oh, Jesus Christ. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to lock my door. So, let me go do that now while I have the chance. There we go. That way people won't think I'm crazy. But I guess technically... Well, I guess technically it's not really... <laughs> calling me insane if I just tell them what's going on. Her greetings made of 100% cheer and bursting energy. Morning. I feel to put either of those into my response. I'm fucking tired. Okay, I'm sorry. I've been, I've been getting bitten up by insects for the fucking weekend. Alright. You don't look very energetic! No wonder. I don't feel very energetic either. I think I didn't sleep well, but I'm not sure. She slaps me in the back and grins. Ow. Cheer up a bit! It's a great day! I catch Shizune's eyes. Shizune's eyes. I, I can never- Now I'm starting to mispronounce Shizune. What the fuck? She has a strange, focused expression on her face, but she furrows her brow a, brow a little at direct eye contact and looks away. For 
For a moment, I think that she's in a caught a glimpse of my worries somehow and is pondering how to respond. But then she quickly strains her glasses and with them her expression. God damn it. Dot dot dot. Anyway, we were wondering if you're still interested in that student council position because we're going to make an offer that you can't decline! Wait, what? I wasn't really interested in the first place. You're putting words in my mouth. My nose is itching for some reason. Dot dot dot. Not as such, but wouldn't it be nice to hang out with us every day while also being useful to your school? Well, to tell you the truth, I... I kinda joined a club. So it'd actually be sort of hard for me to join the council, too. Even if I wanted to. Which I don't, as I said. Da da da. Is that so? Which club is it, Hitchan? The art club. <laughs> Her face! Da da da. You can't join it! She's nice. She's in his eyes glint in a sinister way she scowls at me. With the way she looks, I'll be expecting the art club to lose its funding before lunch break, or the art teacher to mysteriously disappear from the face of the earth. Before she manages to comment, the teacher finally enters the classroom, getting Shizune and Misha off my back, and sending everyone rummaging in their bags for books and pens. I did join the art club, but the first meeting didn't really boost my confidence. I'm not really sure what I'm doing it for. I wish I could draw like Rim, but I don't know what I, could, what I would do if I could. To what end would I use such a skill? I don't really know. Ignoring the teacher's sleep-inducing voice, I open my notebook to an empty page and press the needle-sharp graphite tip of the pencil onto it. What to draw? I can't really think of anything good to draw. As I hesitate and raise my hand, a meek black mark left on the previously blank paper seems aggravating. I can't even seem to get to the starting line, let alone get started. It's almost a physical feeling of being held back. Annoyingly, it reminds me of my failed attempt at jogging with Emmy. I look out the window in desperation. Right then, a small bird takes flight from one of the cherry trees that grow out everywhere on the school grounds. <clears throat> I can't really see it clearly, and it's not like I could tell one tiny bird from another, but I pick it as my subject anyway. Conjuring up the image of, the, of a bird in my mind's eye, I turn my gaze back to the notebook and deliberately draw a thick line across the paper to get started. It seems to be mocking me as I can't follow up right away. Still, it's a start. Getting started is good. I slowly sketch the picture onto the notebook page, the image of my brain becoming clear as the drawing takes shape. It's really nothing, just that nameless nothing bird on paper, but that's not important. My hesitation fades on into the background along with the teacher's voice as I continue my struggle. The feathers form a simple pattern in my mind, but on paper it's a mess of too many rough lines despite my best efforts. I realize I don't really know what a bird's wings should look like, even if I try to think about it. I even put the pencil down and close my eyes for a moment, trying to chase the shape of a wing in my mind. Being this serious about it all of a sudden makes me a little frustrated. Our class in middle school is the easy class in between exhaustion and subjects like math or Japanese. But there's this other side to art, the one that you see when you don't just fool around. It's almost like a completely different thing. You say you're a bad drawer, that's still better than mine! Seriously, I think everybody's... I still think that every artist's pictures are better than mine. Every artist, because I can't draw for shit. Like, if you actually go on, like, if you go to my Twitter account, but you go to the older tweets, yeah, you'll see pictures that I occasionally post up on my drawings. They're horrible. Or better yet, I can just go to the pictures tab and then just see. That'll help. Hey, Chan? Oh, hi. I look up to see two girls staring back at me. Misha and Shizune have carried their chairs to my desk and are now standing by my sides looking at my drawing. Why are you two here? Isn't class- is class over? How long have you two been there? I think you need more practice! Fuck. Shizune draws a few sharp signs in the air between herself and Misha. Shichan agrees! Rin said the exact same thing yesterday, but why did it sound less condescending? Probably because these two are not artists and Rin is. You shouldn't judge before I'm finished. Besides, don't you know it's bad luck to see an unfinished piece of work? Nope. Misha cracks an exuberant laughter. What? Don't be silly! There's no way that could be true! 
Whatever. <laughs> Shizune's eyebrows furrow dangerously, and the movements of her hands become abrupt, like a slashing of a knife. Da da da. You should learn to take constructive criticism better! I would if you'd actually offer some. I know I'm getting too defensive and that Shizune is taking advantage of it, but I can't help it. What are you two doing here, anyway? Da da da. I'm gonna sneeze. Come on. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's like I'm waiting for the sneeze to come and it's not coming. Misha wags her finger admonish admonishingly at my nose. Hey Chan, were you not listening to the teacher at all? Okay, I don't know how to do that really loud in her voice. That like I pronounce it like or and some other people's counts tisk tisk. Like, nah, I think it's like Dot dot dot. We have a group assignment now! Oh my god, my nasal. I nod bleakly and let them take the lead. So, what do you think of the lesson for today? I was not listening. Not much of anything. I didn't listen to a word of it. Misha slaps her forehead and shakes her head theatrically. What are we going to do with you, Chan? Luckily, she's an and Misha together are more effective than three or four normal people, so I can mostly slack on the assignment. I try my best to offer at least some assistance, but I end up being mostly useless. Damn. Something smells like smoke in here. The teacher keeps us in class five minutes past the lunch bells, but eventually lets us off the hook. Oh, don't tell me my dad's smoking in the... F in the freaking house. I quickly stuff my books into my bag while Shizune and Misha carry their chairs back to their own seats. The failure of a bird drawing ends up crumpled and stuffed in my pocket as I hurry outside. AGAIN! THAT'S BETTER THAN WHAT I CAN DO, HASAU! <laughs> That's it? I'm gonna keep going, cause that was too short. As of that morning class and throughout the week, I keep bumping into Ren. Hey, Ren. Hello. This is somewhat natural, as so our classrooms are adjacent, but rather than just cross paths in the hallway like people regularly do, we seem to pause at the side of each other. We invariably end up talking a little bit, or just silently hanging out together. I think I'm getting used to being quiet in Ren's company, so it doesn't feel as awkward anymore. I am, by nature, somewhat introverted like her, so we fit together as well. I think it's actually an anomaly for someone in this school to be so quiet. Most people here seem to love socializing. It's something that I've noticed already, and even, even though I haven't been here very long. People here talk a lot, and they talk all the time. Excuse me. It's a rare case when I see someone sitting alone, just spacing out or whatever. Obviously there are people like that here too. The Hanako girl and myself, just to name two from my own class, but overall they are a minority. At any rate, I wouldn't exactly call what Rin and I do socializing either, but it's something at least. These occurrences themselves don't bother me, but the fact that they happen at all does. I'd hesitate to, s that, to say that we are drawn together by something, but we, but we certainly act as if we were. However, this sense of abiding friendship is completely wrecked every time Rin opens her mouth. Can I listen to your heartbeat? Oh. She says this, or something else about, about her is outrageous, and I have to fend off whatever nonsense her mind has cooked up during the preceding class of a subject that she is not interested in. It seems Rin has taken a shine in my heart condition as some kind of an extension of her interest in the art of disabilities that people here have, and the consequences of said afflictions. As I stand in front of her for a second too long, looking as flummox as I am, she concludes it, she concludes it, it is necessary to further clarify her request. I know I can, but I mean, will you let me? Well, at least she's asking. It's like, like, can I listen to your heartbeat? It's like, I'm, I don't know what to say. It's like, I mean, I know I can, but are you gonna let me? Why? Do I need a reason? I'm usually pretty bad with reasons. Not per se, but if you want to do it, you probably do have a reason. <clears throat> That's kind of clever. You are smarter than you look. Also, I'd rather you not. I think these things should be private. 
just listening to your heartbeat. I don't understand how that's private. I mean, I mean, unless you're like me, who's really uncomfortable with people you barely know touching you, I don't see how it's private. Private. I get it. I could tell you something, though. If it amuses you, I'm pretty sure it will. My heartbeat does sound very weird because of the, you know, condition. And I hear it all the fucking time. So you're paranoid. It's not a question, it's a statement. No, I'm not paranoid. The doctor said that abnormal attention to heartbeat is a common symptom of my condition. So for you, it's normal to be paranoid. <laughs> it's not a question either. One could also say that me being like this in the first place isn't normal either, but what the heck. Paranoia fits me, fits me fine. I don't think it's something that can actually fit anyone or anywhere. You know, I ate an orange today for breakfast. How was it? I'm vaguely proud of myself, managing to keep up with Rin's sudden change of topic. Excellent. I don't remember when I last ate an orange, because it's annoying to peel one. Because I don't have fingers. It's on the list of things I want to learn properly. You have a list? How come you, na how come you ate one, though? Emmy had some, so, so she peeled one for me. Good for you. Rin stretches her back and yawns and says nothing further. She throws me a glance from the from the corner of her eye while she watches people pass by, but I couldn't say why. I realize though that this is the first time I've talked naturally about my condition with anyone, in a way. That's true. It's like it's like to be honest, you're fu you're really reluctant to say what your condition is, and it's like I understand that completely. And I swear to God, if people ask me if I have a condition, yes, I do, but I'm not saying it because I really don't feel comfortable talking about it. A group of boys walks pa walk past us to Rin's classroom, but she doesn't pay them any mind. They pay none to her either. My mind wanders off, spurred by the silence. Maybe I should have listened, let her listen to my heart. It's not like it matters. Nothing really matters that much at the end of the day. I start feeling depressed for no reason again. It's like a tidal wave out of nowhere rolling over my consciousness, submerging me underwater. I feel a sigh coming out of my mouth and I turn away from Rin, pretending to read a poster on the wall. It's an advertisement for the school festival, promoting an event almost a week past. The difference between me and Rin is that I'll be more likely than not dead before turning 30, while she can't eat oranges without help. I can't decide which one of us is worse off. I try to grasp the passing of time, but it seems hard. I'm still used to the rhythm of the hospital, where trivialities such as the day, the week, or time of day didn't really matter. Everything was the same, no matter what. Rediscovering the significance of time is an oddly disorienting experience, and I find myself enjoying the fact that I can categorize events in this fashion. The relevancy of a ticking clock is surprisingly delightful, and I decide to start wearing an analog wristwatch, something I didn't used to do before. When I finally ask Rin on Thursday about something that's been bothering me for the entire week, it's already lunchtime. The time is somewhat between 11.06 and 11.07, so my watch doesn't have a hand to show seconds. It's the old-fashioned kind with a black leather strap and titanium casing. <laughs> that still looks like a fucking fancy-ass watch! It doesn't look flashy, but a wristwatch doesn't need to. Yeah, that's true! That's a thing with people, isn't it? Like, like why the fuck do we buy shit that... That is so trivial. I mean, we buy the most flashiest of crap, but yet we don't. But like, does it really matter? We, I mean, we barely, we barely use it or look at it. Why the hell do we need it to look as good as possible? Hey, remember that sketch you made of me? How you said it looked grim and gloomy or something? I like to know what you meant by that. She gives me a weird look and tilts her head a few degrees to the left, but doesn't say anything for a while. Well, you see... We've known each other for two weeks, and I haven't seen you smile even once. Really? Her striking observation gives me pause. Have I stopped smiling? I have to take what she says as truth. She has no reason to lie. Something about the way she puts it annoys me. I frown at Rin, then try to correct my expression to look less depressed. 
I haven't been in the cheeriest of moods during the past few months or so, so this is true. Does it show so much that someone like Rin can tell after so little contact with me? Should I try to smile more at Rin? Maybe she could appreciate having such a neutral face herself almost all the time. Have I really stopped smiling? I see. Should I smile more? I don't mind either way. Be as you are. You can't help being his sow anyway. But it bothers you? I just noticed it, that's all. Emmy skips along the hallway, jumps to a sharp stop when she reaches us, and lightly pats her in the shoulder. Emmy! You are now going to be known as N.A. because of the- because of Mikako City. I was- I loved N.A. in the first episode. She was ridiculously funny, and I loved it. Ready for lunch? Depends on what lunch is today. Remember that stew from March? Never again that. Let's go anyway! I'm starving! As they are about to depart, Emmy turns from her friend to me, seemingly as an afterthought, and smiles charmingly. By the way, Sal! Her tone is way too sweet and soft to be sincere. I can sense the trap about to be strung upon me by this miniature health devil. I know what she's about to say even before she continues, because I've been trying to avoid her all week. I still haven't seen you at the track this entire week! Maybe I've been there when you haven't. It's impossible! I'm there all the time! Be sleep and go to class. I do those at the same time as you do! Yeah, I know, I know. I just haven't been able to pick myself up. Don't let me out to the nurse, okay? <laughs> Running just isn't my thing, and I haven't come up with a good alternative. Why don't you come to the track meet this weekend? Maybe you'll get inspired! Track meet? Yeah, people from a few other schools come here for some friendly track and field action. It's on Sunday afternoon. I can't think of any reason not to go. Sure, I'll come and cheer for you. I guess you'll be running. Of course, you get to see me beat them all. But bye now. If I don't get something to eat, I'll die. See you later. Oh, God. Bye, Rin. I promise I'll smile next time. A call after her is a bit of an afterthought. After what I feel embarrassed about it, and wonder why I said anything at all. Oh god, we're back to this shit. That night, when I'm doubly certain that Kenji won't be barging in the bathroom, I look in the mirror and smile at my reflection. The me in the mirror smiling at the me in the bathroom looks awfully fake. That again? Katawa shoujo, katawa shoujo, katawa shoujo. Okay, I gotta look to see like how far I'm into this. 240, 222. That's 20 minutes. Yeah, that's just short of 20 minutes. I'll, I'll keep going. Alright. Having exhausted the books Kenji lent me in just a few nights, I go back to the library, deeming it a safer alternative for getting my reading fix. I returned the books he had stolen while on that to Yuko's delight. I don't tell her where I got them though. Wow, you sure read a lot, don't you? Yeah, I guess I do. I mean, I do. Even I think it's weird. I think I might have a reading problem. Maybe I'm a junkie. I'm <laughs> just like me. No, no, I didn't mean it that way. I'm, it's not weird at all. And being addicted to reading is a lot better than being addicted to, to something else. Yeah, I know. It was a joke. I smile at her reassuringly and drop the books on the counter so Yuka could check them out. I feel tired, so I sit down in the vacant chair in front of her desk. Oh shit! Wait a minute. I don't have my basically um the choices that I use for for the path. It's on my phone, and my phone's currently being charged. So it's like basically, if there's a choice that I need to pick, I'm gonna have to go outside, get my phone off the charger, and bring it back in here. So yeah, hopefully there's not a, ch a chart a choice coming up soon. While Yuka goes through the modest pile of reading material I found, I let my gaze wander around the library. At the tables, a pair of girls is chattering in hushed tones rather than working on their homework. The short-haired one notices me looking in their direction and waves at me. When I raise my hand back, they glance at each other and giggle in unison. I'm not sure how I should feel about that, so I decide it's a good thing. The one who waved at me is a horrible case of epilepsy. 
I saw her having an attack a few days ago. It was one of the most disturbing and scary things I've seen in a very long time. Uh, yeah, I will say that. I, I when I, during my freshman year in, um, hi, during my freshman freshman year of high school, uh, a kid in my art class actually had a seizure. That shit scared me. I'm like, oh god, I'm gonna have one soon. <laughs> Uh, oh, oops, stupid alt. Yet there she is, happily chirping away about whatever, as if she doesn't have a care in the world. You know, this school is really something else. Yuko raises her eyes from the book she was going through, slightly startled. She adjusts her glasses and puts on a nervous, confused smile. What do you mean? I don't really know how to explain it. It's just that everyone's so active, or how should I put it? It's not just a festival thing, I think even though I haven't been here that long, but it's everything. People talk more, work harder, and just are more than any other school I've seen before. I'm struggling for words, but it feels like I'm speaking honestly. FUCK! The school feels so alive. Fucking crap! I'll be right back, I need to go fucking get the phone! Damn it! I freaking jinxed myself by saying, Oh, there's probably gonna be a choice coming up! about to give out on me, I have a feeling. Alright. Let's see. No, stop it! Stop it! Damn me and my cruel Konoha obsession. I actually, I was actually looking at the opening when I was watching Makako City actors, and I'm like, Kurohas in this game! I mean, anime! Oh my god! My homicidal maniac's back! Uh, it's refreshing. Sure, there were some people like this in my own school, too, but not as many. <coughs> Fuck! My chair is stuck! I am so sorry about the noise. I like that my chair gets stuck on the mat. And it feels more intense somehow. I think if I had to pin it down on one thing, that the students here really appreciate going to school. I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, me neither. Suddenly I realized I've just been babbling my thoughts to Yuko out of the blue. She's a bit of a jumpy person, so I fear I might have made a bad impression. She's looking at me with what I hope is curiosity rather than horror, so I figure she's alright. Sorry for suddenly talking about weird stuff like this. I didn't mean to trouble you. Oh no, it's not troubling. I'm happy to listen if you feel like talking. It makes me feel a little reliable, too. Yuko smiles sweetly and a little bit ironically at that. I respond with a thankful smile of my own. As she pushes the neat stack of books across the counter, I stand up and gather them in my arms. Here you are! Thank you. I guess we'll be meeting each other again. Please come here any time! Yuko's kindness is heartwarming. You can count on it. See you later. Here we go again! Shoujo, katawa, shoujo, katawa, shoujo. Okay, we. This. How many days have we gone through now? Three? Jesus Christ. 245. God! I hate. I don't want to, like, overload the video because I know the track meet's gonna be long as fuck, but it's like. We're not even at 30 minutes. Like, we're just now past 20. At least as far as I know. Alright, I think I'll keep going, but if it gets too long, like, if it hits, like, 3 o'clock and the track meet does not, like, 3 to 3.10 and the track meet's still not over, I'll, I'll end the video. Alright. Because it's 2.49 right now. The morning of the track meet greets me with a brilliant sunshine from a crystal blue sky. While I leisurely stroll towards the track, I decide this is a good sign. Of what, I'm not sure. This event isn't ex as exciting for me as it seems to be for a larger portion of the student body. I'm even less interested in watching sports than I am in participating, but cheering for Emmy is a good cause. I'm not expecting this to be any sort of amazing and spectacular experience, but it can't hurt. I'd probably be spending time reading while cooped up in my room otherwise. 
When I approach the bleachers, I spot Ren emerging from the crowd right before she spots me. You came. Of course. I said I would, didn't I? That doesn't necessarily imply they had to follow through. <clears throat> Lots of people say things and don't mean them. Well, I don't. Ren shrugs. Seemingly bored with the conversation, she turns on a heel and heads back towards the stands. So, are you excited about this? Not really. Me neither. Then why did you come? Why did you? She doesn't reply at all, so I decide not to either. We enter the bleaches and Rin nods upwards. Up there. Rin leads the way and soon we've settled down on an almost empty bench. Holy shit. There's an older woman sitting next to Rin. Someone's mother, I assume. She's got rather long hair done up in a braid. On seeing Rin, she gives her an oddly familiar seeming grin. Well, this is a surpri this is surprising. I thought you went to get a snack, not a boy. Huh? This is no good. The woman laughs at Rin and shakes her head, apparently unable to find a comeback for that. I know the feeling. Well, I suppose you've always been one to go out for one thing and bring back another. But I'm being rude. I haven't introduced myself. I'm Meiko Ibarazaki. I'm sure that if you know this girl, you've at least met my daughter, too. Pleased to meet you. Well, that explains it. She's like a taller, older, more motherly Emmy. Apart from her hair being somewhat darker than her daughter's, there's really no mistake in the resemblance. Sorry, I'm Hisao. Hisanakai. Nice to meet you. I'm Ren Tezuka. Mrs. Mrs. Ibarazaki, Ibarazaki laughs again. She really does resemble her offspring, and then leans back a little on her seat and raises an eyebrow. So now that we all know each other, how long have you and Rin been dating? Wait, what? <coughs> my response consists of silence as my brain suddenly lurches into gear. But just before I can begin to utter a hastily babbled explanation, Emmy's mother bursts into laughter again. <laughs> You're a blusher, aren't you? I don't really know if there's any way to keep my dignity in this situation, so I settle for a mumbled response. Or not... I know, but it's funny to watch you squirm. I'm sorry, forgive an old woman her amusements. She chuckles again to herself. Old woman? She sure doesn't look that old to me. I suppose I can let it go. How kind of you. It's starting. I direct my attention to the track where they're preparing for the first sprint. There's Emmy. It looked at the 400 meter dash. My, aunt, my eyes scanned the runners before finding Emmy. She's smiling with an almost cocky look on her face. Well, co there's the pistol. The starter raises his pistol. Emmy explodes off the block, disappearing from the starting line in a blur. It's amazing, even as the older sprinters, other sprinters converge on the lanes closest to the inside line, Emmy surges to the front of the pack. By the time she rounds the final turn, a few of the other runners have caught up with her. But she puts on a final burst of speed that leaves them at least half a second behind. Missy Barazaki whoops and shouts, applauding, applauding wildly, and generally looking like any other parent cheering on their child. Emmy bounds off the track, looking pleased with herself. I cheer her right along with the rest of them. The announcer sounding suspiciously like Misha gleefully gives the results. I think she's gotten faster since the last time. That was incredible. Missy Barazaki grins proudly. Emmy's a heck of a runner. We fall silent as the next event prepares to start. I'm surprised to see Emmy striding out onto the track again. Wait, didn't she just run? Emmy's mother nods. Yes, but she runs multiple events for the team, especially the sprints. It's a lot of running, but Emmy can handle it. From the looks of things, she's right. Emmy doesn't appear to be tired, as if she hadn't run the previous event at all. If not for the sweat visible on her shirt, you never know. Which event is this? 
It's the 200 meter dash. She'll do this one, the 100 meter, and the relay. I see. Once again, the pistol sounds, and once again, Emmy flies off the block. A thumping sound draws my attention away from the race. It's Rin's foot. She seems completely absorbed in the race. Emmy's mother cheers again, and I assume the race is over. Sprints don't seem to me like they take very long to complete. Your foot. Hmm? Your foot was bouncing on the bleacher. bleachers. Ah. Oh. You seem pretty into this stuff. I'm surprised. I thought you said this wouldn't be exciting. Hmm, I suppose you're right. It's not that interesting. But I'm watching Emmy, not the sport. I don't follow. Uh, what? What is there not to follow? Like, seriously, you... <laughs> to me, it's like, Hisao, you and Rin came here just for the sole purpose of cheering Emmy on. You know, it's like, of course... Well, of course Ren's gonna be focused on watching Emmy, not the fucking sport. Emmy's the most Emmy when she runs. You don't get to see Emmy at her emmy very often. But here, you can. See? She directs my attention toward the track again, where the 100 meter dash is about to start. I watch Emmy closely. As she gets onto the starter blocks, her whole body seems to relax, but it's a false relaxation. I can see that she's actually like a coiled spring. <clears throat> that cocky smile. As the star tells everyone that gets set, her head snaps up and her eyes narrow slightly. Actually, that's not even a smile. It's more like a smirk, isn't it? Her mouth curls upward and what could be a, a grin and could be a growl. When the pistol calls off, it's as if she's been unleashed from a cage. Like she was always moving at this blinding speed, but we couldn't see it happen until the star's piss until the star's pistol dispelled the illusion of motionlessness. As soon as she crossed the finish line, the fierce slip was replaced by a woman of The conquering general returned into his farm. Amazing. She's really amazing. I've never seen someone move that fast. Well, don't look at me. I'm far too relaxed to run that fast. No, I think Emmy's prowess all came from her father's side. At the mention of Emmy's father, Mrs. Ibar Mrs. Ibarazaki looks wistful, almost sad. He got her into running, you know. Ah, oh, really? I didn't know that. I will leave it at that and don't say anything for a little while. I get the feeling this is something personal I shouldn't ask about. A beeping noise suddenly emanates from Mrs. Ibar Mrs. Ibarazaki's pocket, reaching into it. She pulls out a cell phone and looks at it. Honestly, text messages. What is he, 16? Hmm? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I've got to go meet up with a friend of mine. Will you tell Emmy I'm very proud of her and that I'll call her later tonight? Of course. Damn. That was- <laughs> it skipped again. While waiting for the relay to start up here at Ren, she seems uninterested in her surroundings, myself included. The remark she made before is still stuck in my head. Emmy's the most Emmy when she runs. It does make sense now that I think about it. After seeing her run now, I can believe that Emmy gives her all on the track. And my brother's playing Flappy Bird. Fuck that game! Sprints, sports are more than a hobby or even a competition to her. They're a defining aspect of her life. What about Rin then? Does she feel the same way about art? Considering the persistence she displayed before the festival, I can easily believe it. Did I see Rin her most random when she was painting the mural? The relay is about to begin, but I don't see Emmy anywhere. I thought Emmy ran the relay. She runs anchor. So she won't be running for a while yet. Uh. Did you see it? Huh? Emmy at her Emmyist. Maybe. Hmm, maybe this time. The race begins and I cheer Emmy's teammates along as they pass the baton. And finally I see Emmy sprinting onto the track to take the final handoff. Once again I'm taken aback by how graceful she looks when she runs. It really is beautiful. The look of determination and fearlessness on her face only adds to the picture. Emmy her Emmyus, I suppose. 
Emmy flies across the finishing line with a great leap, just barely ahead of the next Simonis, but still in first. Well, let's go down. Gotta crown the victor. See if he can find a laurel branch. That's not going to be easy. Rin shrugs. At least we tried. We didn't try at all. Emmy is surrounded by her teammates, all of them congratulating her on the run. Rin seems to be waiting for Emmy to notice that she's arrived. It doesn't seem her style to draw attention to herself, or to emote beyond shrugging. Being more being more impatient than Rin, I wave to Emmy in her ste steed instead. I don't know. She looks up and grins happily at us. Hey, you shut up! We would have brought you a clown of Lars, but Hassal didn't find one. Neither do you. It wasn't my job to look. When did we assign jobs? When I see, when I said, see if you can find a laurel branch. Try to keep up. <laughs> I shrug. Guess Rin's rubbing off on me. Seems it's my fault after all, Emmy. <laughs> Emmy laughs at Rin's at me. It's okay. I'm sure you'll make it up to me somehow. Uh, sure. Good! So how do I look? Very impressive. Emmy seems pleased with this assessment. I don't mention how much more impressive her performance is given like her legs. I figure she knows that already. Besides, it seems like it would take away from her efforts somehow. Great to hear! I was worried that it looked a little slow on the relay, but I guess it did fine, huh? Emmy giggles and then seems to remember something. something next Sunday is a post-track meet celebration! You should come along! Normally we do it the day after, but since today is Sunday, I've got homework and class and all that stuff to take care of! Oh sure, I'd love to. Great! It's a promise then! Oh right, your mom wanted to say she's proud of you. She'll call you later tonight. I thought I saw her in the stands! I'm glad she made it! Hey, Emmy, you're going to miss the medal ceremony. Oh, yeah, thanks. She turns to the ring of myself. You don't have to stick around for this part. It takes forever. Besides, you should get cracking on your homework now if you don't want to be up late, Hassel. Emmy skips back to her teammates, leaving me and Rin by ourselves. Neither of us has the slightest interest in the post-competition ceremony, so we silently get away and back to the quad. Rin yawns without even trying to restrain herself and shuffles her feet around restlessly. I feel awkward, but less so than if I was with someone else. Still, I'm left hanging, not knowing what I should say next. Emmy was great, wasn't she? She was great. I am very jealous of her. Why? Like I said, don't you think it's great to be able to be- to really be yourself? It sounds weird coming from Rin. I don't think you of all people should have trouble finding a way to express yourself. Don't you have your paintings? She turns to look at me. For the first time, I see in her eyes this strange, hollow expression that I think must be unique to her. No, you see, the problem is that I'm not really sure who I am. Huh. Kata. Katawa shoujo. Katawa shoujo. Katawa shoujo. Damn. All right, so 258 from 222. All right, that's just short of 30, I think 40 minutes. So let's save here. All right, so that was Kasawa, Kasawa, Katawa Shoujo part, part 13 and the dogs are barking. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, basically, tomorrow is, t this week, I'm so happy for, is that it's another, it's another four-day week for me, thank god. And I don't understand why, though. Oh yeah, it's good day, wait, I think it's good Friday this week. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching, alright, so Pokemon Randomized, yeah, Pokemon Randomized Platinum will be back up tomorrow, 
after school, after I'm done with school, and, uh, yeah, so basically, hope you, alright, so, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys again for Pokemon Randomized Platinum tomorrow, so, see ya!